G'day, I'm James. And here's a classic egg drop puzzle. This puzzle's been around for many, many years, but I was recently reminded of it in a great new book called Math Recess by Chris Brownell and Sunil Singh, published by Impress Publications. They talk about it in chapter three of their book, and it's a great puzzle for students to explore. I've seen this puzzle for many, many years, and I've not actually explored it myself, because I had an emotional reaction to it. It's actually scared me. But then, after reading Math Recess, I said, okay, time to get my brain on this puzzle too, Tanton. Let's see if we can make this work. What is my brain, why is my brain resistant to this, and how can I get over my resistance? But first, here's the puzzle. I wrote it out in my scrawly handwriting, which no one can read, so in which case, let me read it out loud to you now. Each floor of a 100-story building, there's a 100-story building, has a balcony, there's a balcony, over which we can drop an egg. Here's an egg. And watch it hit the ground. And I can watch it hit the ground. Now the egg either breaks, splat, or it does not, it somehow survives. Now if it doesn't break, then I can use the egg again, climb to another floor, and drop it again. So eggs can be reused if they survive the, the fall. All right, the puzzle says, I have two eggs. Indeed I do, here's two eggs. And I want to classify each floor of the building as either a breaking floor or a non-breaking floor. So I'll write B, eggs break when they've dropped from here, or write N, but eggs do not break if they drop from there. So each floor is to be classified as either B for a breaking floor, N for a non-breaking floor. Now the question is, how many egg drop experiments should I plan for in order to classify each and every floor of this 100 story building? That's the puzzle. All right, so let's think about what that means. So, I mean, I can take an egg up to some floor and maybe drop, drop it off this one here. And two things can happen. First of all, if I watch it break, maybe it breaks as it goes down, do I know anything about any other floor? I mean, that would be a breaking floor. Well, yes, logic tells me that actually, if it breaks from being dropped from this height, then surely it's gonna break from being dropped from any higher height as well. So that means this floor is a breaking floor, breaking, breaking, in fact, all the floors above me would also have to be breaking floors by logic. So I would have classified all the floors, the one I was on and above. But I'll know nothing about the floors below me. Because I don't know where's the first height where it starts breaking. Maybe it starts breaking there's the first height. So that's breaking, breaking, not breaking, not breaking, not breaking, not breaking, don't know. Okay, so if it breaks, I can classify the upper floors, but not the lower ones. The other option is, if I drop it from there, it might turn out that it doesn't break. It's a non-breaking floor, the egg survives, which is going to use it again. Oh, but logic tells me if it survives this height of fall, then it, probably survive, then it will survive that height as well, a lesser, lesser fall, or a lesser fall, lesser fall. That will be not breaking, not breaking. In fact, all those floors will be not breaking as well. So if this is a non-breaking floor, then I know that all the floors below me are also non-breaking and therefore classified but I'll know nothing about the floors above me. Maybe it'll break just there. That's just the right height to make it break. Or maybe it's up there it breaks. Or maybe it's up there it breaks. I won't know, I won't know. All right, so one egg drop experiment can actually tell me, if I'm lucky, floors below me, if it's not breaking, or the floors above me, if it's breaking, but it won't classify everything. So obviously I'm gonna to need to do more than just one egg drop experiment. Though, though actually it is possible I could be lucky, one egg drop experiment could classify all the floors, Namely, if I went to the first floor, went here, and it broke, then I'll know the first floor is a breaking floor, second floor is a breaking floor, everything's a breaking floor. So it's possible I could classify all 100 stories with just one egg drop experiment if I'm in that lucky situation. But who knows if I'm gonna be lucky. So I need to plan for this. So how many experiments should I plan to do in order to guarantee that I'll know information about each and every one of those 100 stories? And I'm taking a deep breath. Because that was my first reaction when I first saw this puzzle many years ago. It just gave me the heebie-jeebies. Um, I, I actually, I've never thought about this puzzle. It, it, I, I actually ran away from it. Because we've got some eggs, we've got two eggs. We've got some floors, we've got 100 floors, 100 stories. And we're trying to get a number of experiments, how many experiments we need. And this puzzle just, it gave me a bad reaction in the sense that I thought this is going to be too hard to analyze. For example, I'll go up to some floor, drop an egg, and I'm going to fall into all these cases. Breaks doesn't break. What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? It just seemed I'd be stuck in some massive recursive relation I had to work my way through, and it just seemed like too hard work. So I actually avoided this puzzle for you know, a good 10 years or so. But then I saw it in math recess, and these two fine gentlemen suggesting this is a great puzzle for students to do. And I'm thinking, okay, I've got to do it. Tanton, get your brain on this puzzle. What is your resistance to it, and can you break through that? So, you know, I'm doing my very human thing. There are two steps to problem solving. Number one, have your honest human reaction to it. I did. I got scared of this puzzle, and my reaction was to run away from it. 
Step two is the one I need to do now, is do something. So I'm about to do the something. So here's how my brain, finally, after all these years, when it said, okay, let's work on this puzzle, worked on it. So I looked at what we're trying to do. So um, first of all, I can see this, this like three data points, number of eggs, number of floors, number of ex experiments you need to do. And it was this part that scared me, trying to get to the number of experiments. So I did what every good mathematician does. If you've got a question and you don't like it, change the question. So I decided, let's not make the number of floors fixed, let's make the number of experiments fixed. So let's say we have some number of experiments, fixed number of experiments, and we're going for the number of floors. Now what do I mean by that? Well, oh, bad handwriting, it's even bad for me, I can't read my own writing, so experiments. In fact, let's get some numbers. Let's say it's n experiments, and let's say it's k eggs. So, you know, I don't need to be locked in the number two. So k eggs, n experiments, and I want to classify some floors. Now, what I mean by that is, I obviously want to classify floor one, floor two, floor three, all the way up to 100 stories, but I don't want to be locked into the number 100. So let's make this an infinitely tall building. Let's just have it keep going up, up and up and up and up. So my question is, with k eggs and willing to run up and down the stairs n times, how high can I go to classify as floors one, two, three, up to the highest number? What's the highest number I can get to? So I decided to answer that puzzle instead, which seems awfully strange. If you give me two eggs and say I'm willing to run up the stairs four times, two eggs and four experiments, how high can I possibly guarantee to uh, classify those floors? If I go to 17 eggs, I'm willing to uh, go up the balcony only three times, how high can I guarantee to classify? That was actually a more tractable puzzle for me, so that's the one I want to share with you now. But I'm going to need some more boardroom, so let me um, erase that, and I'll be back in just a moment. Okay, so here's the version of the puzzle I decided to play with, because it just seemed more comfortable in my mind for reasons I don't quite understand. I don't understand my brain. Anyhow, but I wanted to fix the number of eggs and fix the number of experiments. How many, how many times I'm willing to climb up to a floor and drop an egg over? And the question now is, how high could I go? Classify floor one, floor two, floor three, all the way up to some number. That seemed much more tractable to, be, to me. Great, so I'm gonna solve that puzzle instead. And probably helps with the original puzzle, I hope. Okay, but again, I'm still being abstract. I know the puzzle wanted two eggs and wanted me to figure out the number of experiments, but K and N is too abstract. Let me just play with small numbers because that's what every good mathematician does. If you don't know what to do, just try the simplest case possible. I mean, simplest would be no eggs, in which case I can do nothing, but one egg is probably the first meaningful thing to try, and what could I do with just one experiment? So if I had one egg, and I'm willing to drop an egg over one time, how high could I classify? Floor one, and floor two, floor three, up to how high? Well, this one I think I can think my way through. I mean, if I were to drop an egg at some upper number floor, and it doesn't break, okay, this is a non-breaking floor, then I know all that's non-breaking, great. But if it breaks, I'm in trouble, because if it breaks, I've lost my egg, I can't use it again, and I'll know all the floors above me are breaking floors, and I know nothing about the beginning floors, where I want to start classifying. I want to start classifying from one, two, and up. So the only thing I can do, just in case I'm in trouble, is to drop an egg from the first floor. If it breaks, then I know that's a breaking floor, and I'll know nothing else, at least no floor number one. But if it's non-breaking, I'll know floor number one is non-breaking, and I'll luck out and know every floor is also non-breaking. So, with one experiment and one egg, I know I can classify floor number one for sure, and that's all I can promise. I might be able to do them all, but I can only promise being actually be able to classify floor number one. So the answer here is I can classify floor one. This is as high as I can go, floor one. All right, let's just keep doing this. Well, if I have one egg and uh, two experiments, okay, how far could I classify then? This marker's are running out, so I should change markers in a moment. One egg and two experiments. All right, how high could I go? Well, if I'm willing to do two experiments, but I've only got one egg, hmm, so if it breaks, I'm out of luck. So let's see, if I go to a fairly high floor and first drop my one egg and it breaks, I'm in trouble, I'm in trouble. So my first experiment better be from either floor one or floor two. Actually, if I drop from floor two and it breaks, I'm in trouble, I know nothing about floor one. So my first experiment has to be floor one. If it breaks, okay, then I've classified floor one, two and upwards as breaking. If it doesn't break, the egg has survived, I've still got the egg, I'm willing to do one more experiment, so I'll know this is an N, and I'm willing to do one more experiment because I've still got one egg and one experiment left. Well, if I go above floor two and it breaks, 
Great, I'll know they're all breaking. I won't know anything about floor two itself. So I'm gonna to have to do floor two next. Either it breaks or it doesn't break, but I'll know it, I'll know floor two. And then, that's it, my two experiments, done my two drops, that's as high as I can go. So the highest I can go here is floor two. All right, now one egg, I'm building my way up, three experiments. And I'm wondering now if it's floor three is as high as I can promise to go. Well, I think the same reasoning works. I've only got one precious egg, so as soon as it breaks, I'm out of luck. So if I go to a high floor first and it breaks, I'll know all about those, but nothing about ones, two, and so forth. So my first experiment's got to be floor one. If it breaks, okay, I've lost my egg, but I'll know everything is a breaking floor. If it survives, I can do two more experiments. Okay, again, if I go to a high floor and it breaks, I've lost my egg and I know nothing about here. So the next floor I have to classify is floor two. I have to go to floor two next. All right, if it breaks, no worries. I've lost my egg, but I know everything. However, if it survives, I've got one experiment left and I've still got my egg. And if I go to a high floor, I'll be in trouble. I have to go to th floor three next. So I have to go to floor three. And if it breaks, great, I'll know everything. If it doesn't break, then I'll know at least floors one, two, and three. So the highest I can go to is floor three. In fact, now you can argue this way, that with one egg and n experiments, we can always go to floor n. We can promise getting up to floor n. We can't promise any more, but we can promise getting to floor n. All right, so the same reason there is classified this. I know it for one egg. All right, so I guess now I should do two eggs and three eggs and so forth and build my way up. It's getting scary, so I'm gonna do this Keeping one egg fixed, what if I now make it always one experiment and change the number of eggs? So uh, let me clean the board and we'll do that next. Okay, so I've actually started making a table of all the data we're collecting. I've got here the number of eggs we're going to play with, k of them, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and so on. Number of experiments we're willing to do, 1, 2, 3, 4, 7, 8, 9, and so forth. And I'm writing number, the numbers in pink, the highest floor we expect to go to. Now we did the case of just playing with one egg, and I changed the number of experiments. Here are the highest floors we can promise to classify. One egg and three experiments, floor up to floor three. One egg and five experiments, up to floor five, and so on. That's what we did last time. Now I want to go, rather than keep the number of uh, eggs fixed at one, let's keep the number of experiments fixed at one. That is, I want to see if I can figure out these numbers. So I've got one egg and one experiment. We've done that one. You can promise to classify floor one and no higher. Then look at two eggs and one experiment. Two eggs, and I'm willing to do one experiment. Oh, but think about it. If I'm only willing to drop one egg, that's it. Having a second egg is irrelevant. I might as well just have one egg in hand because I'm only willing to do one experiment. So having two eggs and one experiment is the same as one egg and one experiment. So I must have the same answer as one egg and one experiment. One. Having three eggs in hand, I'm only willing to do one drop. I might as well just have one egg. Yeah, doesn't, the other two are irrelevant. So I'm actually in this situation as well. One, 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 one. All right. So the reason I've got this tables now is I'm starting to see I've got the left column for sure, I've got the top row for sure, then maybe I can start getting some middle numbers by trying to find some structure in this. I wonder if there's structure. For example, I want k eggs and n experiments. I want some number of experiments, some number of eggs. I want to get to some number like that. Would it be amazing if I can fill in the table and see a pattern that lets me to bring in, work my way towards any other entry in the table? All right, so that's my thinking right now. So let's imagine I'm in this situation. So I'm gonna to have to do something. My first move is to drop an egg from some floor. So let's suppose I just go to the eighth floor. I don't, or an eighth floor. All right, so if I've got K eggs, I'm willing to do N experiments, and I'm gonna to go to the eighth floor. We'll see if we work out what A is and figure out what's going on. Now, if I drop an egg from there, there's either two options. Either the egg breaks or the egg survives. Now, if the egg breaks, I've lost an egg. I'm down one egg. I'm also down one experiment, because I've just done one experiment on my n of them, so I've got n minus one experiments left. So the egg breaks, I'll be in the situation with one less egg, k minus one eggs, and I've got n minus one experiments still to do. So I'll be in that situation, the egg breaks. But if the egg survives, I've still got k eggs, and I still have n minus one experiments left to play with. All right, so that's what would happen if I drop an egg from some floor, the eighth floor. I don't know what the number a is. All right, but, but, oh, look at this. If this is on row n and uh, column k, if I'm in the k eggs and nth floor situation here, trying to get this number, it looks like it's going to be related to this number, which is k minus 1, so one column uh, to the left, n minus 1, one row up. It's going to be related to this number, and it might be also related to k eggs, same column, one less experiment, that number. 
It might be the fact that this number is connected to these two numbers. I'm hoping, I'm hoping. Oh, I'm gonna keep thinking about this now. Um, so let's assume we have filled out this table that I know all the numbers up here. I'm actually able to figure out, see if I can figure out what the next number has to be. So I know this number, I know this number. In fact, I shouldn't call them X, let me call them X and Y. All right, suppose I do know these two numbers, and I'm trying to get to this one here. This is the situation we're in right now. All right, let's go through each case. If I'm in the breaking case, I'm now left with, I'm on the eighth floor and I've only got K minus one eggs to do and N minus one experiments. Well, and the egg is broken. So what do I know? I know that's a breaking floor. In fact, that's a breaking floor. I know that's a breaking floor. Breaking, 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 breaking. Everything is breaking. So I've classified all the floors above me, all of them. However, I know nothing about the floors below me right now. But I've got K minus one eggs and I've got N minus one experiments. I know I can get all the way up to floor X if I've got this table worked out in that situation. I know I can actually classify all those if I go, if I go up to floor X. So that suggests to me I need to go to floor X plus one. Because if I go to floor X plus one, whatever that number is, go to the one floor up from that, then if it breaks, I'll know all that, I'll know all that, I'll know everything. I've classified all floors, all classified. That would be a brilliant situation. But I might not be in that situation. I could be on floor A and the egg survives. Oh, so which case, which case could change this, change my thinking, change my thinking. Uh, that's a non-breaking floor. In which case, I know all the floors below me are non-breaking. Oh, so I would have classified all those floors as well. I just don't know the ones above me. Okay, how high above me can I go? Well, I know with K eggs and N minus one experiments, I can go up to Y floors. Oh, so that means I can actually get an extra Y floors classified in this situation. Ah, look at this. If I do indeed go to the floor with X number of floors below me, so I go to floor X plus one, if it breaks, I've classified everything. Great. If it doesn't break, I know I can get all that, the X plus one floor and an extra Y floors. I know I can get to floor X plus Y plus one. The X floors, the one floor I'm on, and extra Y floors. This must be X plus Y plus one. Whoa, that's it. Every entry is kind of the sum of the two entries above it plus an extra one. For example, this entry must be a one plus a one and an extra one, three. A one plus a one, an extra one, three. A one plus a one, extra one, three, three, three. Uh, this entry here, two plus three plus an extra one, six. Three plus three plus an extra one, seven, 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 seven. Three plus six, nine plus an extra one, 10. 14, 15, 15, 15, oh my gosh, 14, 15, uh, 25, uh, 30, uh, 31, 31, uh, 21, uh, uh, for 41, uh, am I doing this correctly? 56, uh, 62, uh, 63, and so on. Uh, 27, 28, uh, I'm getting tired. Whoa, there is the complete data for this egg dropping situation. This is gorgeous, this is gorgeous. And I look at this and I start seeing all sorts of amazing structure. There are the counting numbers. Here are the one, three, six, 10, 15, 21, 20, the triangular numbers. In fact, two eggs is the original puzzle. Play with those two eggs, how high can I go? Well, actually, I want to get to 100 stories, you remember, I want to get to 100. So when do the triangular numbers reach the number 100? So the next one is um, uh, 21, so add seven, add, add eight is 36, add nine, 45, 55, 66, 78, 91, uh, plus uh, that's 13, add 14, 105, oh, 14. The 14th triangular number is 105. That is, with 14 egg drops, I can get and classify 105 stories. So with a 100 story building, I can, in the worst case scenario, I'll need to do 14 egg drop experiments. I've solved the original puzzle. 13 won't do it because I know I can only promise to classify up to floor 91 with 13 egg drops experiments, so I'll need 14, I might need 14 egg drops. But with 14, I can promise you I'll get to floor 100. In fact, I can get to floor 105 for you. Wow, wow. Now, there is so much mathematics in this structure. There's so much mathematics to explore. So I actually wrote an essay really going deep into the mathematics here. Uh, but I'm going to show you the connection to Pascal's triangle with these numbers. They're kind of weird, but there's a connection to Pascal's triangle here. Also, you notice the connection to the powers of two. These numbers stabilize after a while. All ones on the first row. Hiccup, and then it's all threes. A couple of hiccups, and it's all sevens. Some hiccups, and it's all fifteens. Some hiccups, and it's all thirty-ones. It's all sixty-threes. 
1, 3, 7, 15, 31, 63. They're all the numbers one less than the power of 2. And that's not a coincidence, that turns out to be true. All right, so let me clean the board and I'll just give a tease about how Pascal's triangle is actually in this table here. Um, but I'll refer to the essay if you want to actually see my brain really going deep into the mathematics because it's all kind of cool and fun. But let me clean the board. I'll be back in just a moment. All right, so here's Pascal's arithmetic triangle. I should point out that's the name we give it in the West because we honor Blaise Pascal who used it in his probability theory, but this triangle has been known by mankind for centuries and millennia in ancient China, in the Middle East and so forth, and it should be known by many different names for the many different cultures that discovered it. Anyhow, this arithmetic triangle is actually hidden in this egg dropping experiment. And let me show you how. I'm going to ignore the stabilization number. So let's just get rid of once things are stabilized, get rid of those ones, get rid of those extra threes, extra sevens, extra fifteens, extra thirty ones, and so on. So we just focus on those numbers once they've stabilized. And you can see them in Pascal's triangle. The way to do that is just not worry about the first row of ones. Okay? Grand. So I'll just this part of the triangle. And look, I've got one on the first row. One. I've got two and then do sums. Two plus one is three. Two and three. Three. Three plus three is six. Three plus three plus one is seven. Three, six, seven. Do the partial sums along each row of this truncated triangle. Four, ten, uh, four, ten, fourteen, fifteen. Four, ten, fourteen, fifteen. Five, fifteen, twenty-five, uh, thirty, thirty-one. Five, fifteen, twenty-five, thirty-one. Whoa. So actually, doing the partial sums of truncated Pascal's triangle actually gives you the egg dropping numbers. Whoa! And of course I discussed that in the essay as well, but this is just beautiful, beautiful mathematics. And I'm so sorry I spent 12 years being scared of this puzzle, but now that I've done it, I am just thrilled and delighted. So thank you Math Recess, you got me going on some really cool math.